Hello, that's the wrong microphone. Let's try actually do it again. Hello. All right, seems like it's working now. Okay, cool. You guys hear me now? Anyone hear me now? Anyone hear me now? Let me just check over here. Okay, cool. You guys hear me now? Yep, it's working. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. I don't know why my microphone was kind of weird. Today it didn't. I didn't play any music in the beginning because YouTube is kind of being picky with these videos. All right, so how are you guys been going on? This how's this week been going on for you guys? It's been super busy for me, which is great. I like being busy. I like working. So yeah, been doing some things apart from just uh, Houdini stuff. I built this. Uh, let me unplug this. I built this keyboard. Um, I built this from from scratch like above a part of the parts uh, solder the switches uh, but the uh, but the little keycap separately and everything and just put it together it was pretty fun actually um, I've been meaning to do something like this for a while and I was just like really good now I need to learn how to use it because <laughs> it's a split keyboard so uh, need to know uh, how to use it now, but uh, yeah, I'm not using it right now because I'm pretty slow with it, <laughs> so I don't want to be pretty slow right now, but yeah. And yesterday I did some maintenance on my guitar, which is there, that guitar there, <laughs> how do I point to that, that guitar right there. Just did some maintenance yesterday, um, changed the strings a bit because uh, I had uh, bigger strings on that guitar because it's a 7 string and I installed 10 to 60s on that but it was pretty, uh, pretty heavy because that guitar has a shorter range not it's not a long range like my other seven string which feels fine with the ten with the tens but uh this one feels really stiff so I just bought nines on that one and yeah it feels way better so but I had to adjust the the truss rod a little bit I had to adjust the uh, the springs on the back so the Floyd Royce is Floyd Rose is uh level and etc yeah. takes a while but it was cool, actually. So yeah, Santosh, been doing Houdini lighter UE4. Cool, awesome. Sounds like like fun. All right, so let's start. Uh, last week, uh, we follow one of the uh, we were following one of the tutorials from Peter uh, Peter Class. Um, so we're gonna finish today that one uh, hopefully it's gonna be the rest of it might be a little bit easier um, I got stuck last week let me switch my screens here so we got stuck or I got stuck because you guys are probably not not sure if you guys are doing it but if you are great uh, we got stuck or I got stuck again in um, in flipping these guys uh, porting one part of this, but now I just did it. Uh, Matt Stella helped me on the uh, CG Wiki uh, Discord, helped me get this working. Uh, so, what I did for this, you can see I just added some color there so I can see when they are actually flipping. So, they're flipping from red to green. So what I did was this. I tested a ton of crap. I couldn't just, I mean, I had the right idea, seems like, but what I ended up doing is, let's see what I did here. Uh, wait, where did I do this? 
da da da. What the? Isn't it here? Oh yes, yeah, it is here. Um, the code is just this part, so I can just copy that and show you guys in something bigger. Uh, close some of these files. I'm gonna set this to back so it's pretty. So uh, this is what I end up doing. It's it's similar to what I was trying, but it wasn't working. I never tried doing the Orion for some reason. I was trying the rod. I was trying the app vector. I was trying to use different things. I never. Uh, put that value into the Orient, which is uh, exactly what I needed to do actually. So yeah, so basically we create a spin attribute uh, that we pass this uh, high position uh, value we created before and then we just mul multiply that by 180, which is what we, with what it was in the on the other expression, we set the axis that we're gonna rotate on, and then we just do a quaternion with that, pass it to the orient. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's that's the way we rotate this guy. So let's go. Let me open the tutorial. Again, I I think I set up this incorrectly because I should have gotten the um, the. Uh, headset to listen to the tutorial but uh i'm not sure how i'm gonna do this right now maybe just do it do it in, in low volume here and da -da 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 -da. let's find it i don't remember it's this one that we were on i mean the effect is i guess it's basically done in a way So he added some drag to this just so, I guess just so it's uh, I don't really know why. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. You can even see those uh, little particles do that. It's working fine working as expected uh, all right so what else is gonna happen here Peter tell us what am I doing So that's the output, then he's going to... Uh... Copy the boxes to that, seems like... Um... ...seem to be working, my particles are nicely rotating and, you know, they're doing their thing. But are they really? Because we can't really tell at the moment, because there is no, you know, no way of seeing if they're actually flipping or not. He's just adding colors to those things. I, we just already did that, so I'm gonna skip that. I mean, that's pretty simple stuff. You know how to add colors to things. Hopefully. Setting some velocity, I don't know why exactly it's adding velocity up. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I mean, we are already at that point. So we are already at this. If we want to have a bigger area of flipping, we just go here and make this guy. The radius of this guy uh, bigger. Like that. Whoa, that was way too much. So yeah, that is that is working fine. It's it's looking pretty it's looking pretty cool actually. So if we wanted to make it faster, we'll just, just animate this thing. However, we would like it to go. A pretty nice effect. Uh, all right, so let's see what else what's happening here that it's actually affecting the effect, affecting the effect. So he's adding some noise to the uh, force up just to break up the effect a little bit. I mean, it's something that you might want to do or not. Uh, depends on what you are going for in the effect. Uh, this force up, he's just going to put in one here and then add in a little bit of noise on the on the particles I guess you can see it better here you can see now they're not all the same exact position I mean, this is just something you might want to do maybe you're not but also you can see it's, it's breaking this thing because some of these things are just uh, weird the way I did it but so I'm not actually gonna do that I like them to be like really mechanical kinda uh, effect that's what I want actually but you can if you want to do that like add some uh, amplitude on that uh, I guess it's just doing basically adding scale only on the y-axis and zero in the other one so only affects the y-axis the other axis is gonna just stay the same I'm not sure exactly why this is breaking uh, my collisions it's weird but uh, I'm not gonna add that uh, if I had more time to debug that I could uh, so let's see it's uh, it's doing that adding that noise then he oh that's interesting here Okay, so after the fact, he's just, um, after this, he's just basically just multiplying the, the position by some value so you can control how high they go. Uh, here, for example, um, we don't have the point position, but the points up anymore, so we could just do it really simply with that River Wrangle and just say uh, P that Y multiply by some value he was just doing two there for example and that would be just uh that's exactly i mean just th that is doing making it higher uh you can see let me turn on caching here because i turned that off you can see now they are going higher 
can just multiply this to whatever if you want them to be going higher you can this is just the post uh, simulation so they're just basically gonna be uh, doing exactly what you want but he also does that just multiplies by zero so they basically just flip in place which is also really nice looks pretty good also also that flipping in place it's uh, I, act, I like it actually yeah that's nice you can give it maybe just a little bit of of, of position like just a tad to make it like a little bit of reaction but yeah I mean this is something you will see in in broadcast TV stuff like that is it's pretty common to see this effect uh, let me do this thing faster for now times 10 I guess let's see how fast this gets oh that's pretty fast uh, let's do it by 5 maybe yeah okay just want to get something faster for now maybe even 4 uh but yeah this is nice uh, let's we can call this hike because this is again this is just after the fact after the simulation we're just controlling the the, the position in the in the y-axis if we just left this to one it will just be whatever we have from the simulation right it's just the same thing there we go you see this looks pretty cool i like this like it cool so now let's see what else is gonna happen here this is a really 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 nice uh, tutorial actually now he's multiplying the dot by the the f current frame which is going to be It's just basically doing some different testing with the uh, with frames. All right. Well, that's nice. Uh, let's see part four. See what's what's gonna happen in part four. So he's going to add the uh, the uh, UVs now. So he's saving saving a version of this. Saving another one from the for the bottom. I mean, there's different way to different ways to do this. He's just doing uh, doing a projection. I would just maybe uh, do a UV projection using a time shift. I mean, it's nothing wrong with what he's doing. I'll just do this, delete, selected, and uh, uh, basically this is gonna be static. It's not gonna be animated. Uh, at all so I could just do the UVs on this and then transfer it back uh, UV uh, UV project I guess it's gonna be not okay and now I can project it to um, in a direction uh, wait this is not what I want I like want UV texture actually UV Texture. Um, 
what I would do actually is this. Uh, we actually could just say get this this face uh, into a group. So let's uh, let's see what the hell's happening here. So let's just say I create a group. I'm gonna call this uh, top group and I create another group. I mean, this is just the way I will do it. Uh, if you want to do it the way he's doing it, I guess it's cool. Uh, I will say this is gonna be frame um, phase five because I have it here and this is gonna be phase four. Actually, this is five, yeah, and this is gonna be phase four. Now I could just do the same with the these things instead of the numbers, I can say the top group is gonna be that one. You can see it's still red. And then this, it's gonna be uh, the bottom group. You can see right now it's not, it's doing everything, but if I say to the bottom, it just do that. So basically I just group the two faces. And I like to do this a lot. Whenever I'm, whenever I'm copying um, an object, I like to prepare my groups before I'm, I copy everything. And then I use that after the fact. So which in this case is, if I go over here, uh, all those faces that got copied are already using the top and the bottom groups and I can just really quickly uh, just use those um, here. I can see if I blast the bottom group, you can see I'm just deleting the bottom. Uh, I just can keep that uh, or delete it. Uh, I can do the same for the top group. I can keep it or delete it any way I want. And this means that I just don't have to do any crazy stuff here. I can just say with one UV texture, I can say, well, I'm gonna project this to the uh, project this to the top group on, on the UVs on the on the Y axis in this direction is pretty simple uh, and that's it uh, that's uh, basically done I can say quick uh, just put a quick uh, quick shade and you can see there's the UVs I could I can delete the uh, the color if I want to if I go here and modify my box of course it's gonna be cool i can make it so it kind of fills the the space a little bit better there if i want it but you can see the uvs are fine i always uh find the uvs with the uv project on 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 the y-axis are flipped seems like they meant to be projected from the bottom maybe so i just uh flip the the y skills so now they are actually good but they are still weird uh no they are they are i mean if you left them as they are they are weird you can see this is the right orientation if you give it leave it to one it's flip uh, i don't know maybe the the y the uh ue projects supposed to be projected from the bottom for some reason i don't know uh so yeah so you can see, I can see, I can say UV, UV is top, and then I can just do the same from the bottom here, uh, and say UV is uh, bottom. Maybe even we can, I don't know, maybe we can even try doing both at the same time. It's gonna be probably the same bottom group. Let's see what happens. This is, looks fine. If we go below, this looks, flipped so that's why i uh didn't want it. i mean we can we can test this before we even uh say that this is wrong let's say wait let's apply some pictures to this i guess and and see if uh let's use the quick material as well uh we can just set uh a base texture to this let's use the houdini textures uh, but not those ones just use the, the peak here let's put the uh, the mandrel I love the mandrel let's put the mandrel there you can see the mandrel is cool let's just uh, let's remove the color for now attribute delete let's delete the uh, point color uh, it's not on the points it's on the primitives actually so now we can see that the mandrels there but seems like on the bottom it's a little it's okay as well we can say again apply this to the top group I'm gonna apply the, the mandrel to the top group here let's say material top 
and then do another one for the bottom and see if the bottom needs a separate UVs, uh, separate UVs or not. Material bottom, uh, let's add this to the bottom, not to the top, and then, sorry, I don't wanna do that. Select the picture for that. Let's put the, uh, what do we put there? I don't know. If we try this Houdini thingy or let's see what else is here what else is fun ah the snail let's put the snail there so we have a snail on the bottom uh, let's see how they flipped actually so this has been actually we did it I did it all on this on this steel frame so I would have to now uh, copy those uh, attributes attribute uh, attribute we can do an attribute transfer here and say transfer to this geometry transfer the the UVs here and let's move this to the other side and then the UVs are on the uh, vertex attribute so make sure in the attribute transfer to enable these guys so you actually have uvs and then we connect this and we should have uvs right or not maybe let's uh, select that guy and let's see what am i doing i'm transferring that this and oh there we are yeah it is transferred no wait this one should be well this is this is to be determined that we needed so that is there and that is I think this is gonna it's not gonna be is it working fine It's weird. I think we're transferring as we animate, right? Um, how do we how do we do this thing? Uh, uh, uh. Attribute transfer. Wait, wait, wait. I'm blanking here a little bit. So we need to transfer this attribute to this animated geometry. Uh, oh no, we don't need to do <laughs> Well, how do we do this? I just wanted to see if I can do this this way, but uh, Attribute, we just copy the attribute and leave it there or let me see, let me try this one. Attribute transfer. Status attribute copy. And we have this, let's see. So that works. Okay, so yeah, attribute copy. Attribute copy works. Uh, oh, I know, uh, I see. I see what's happening here. The other thing is that when you flip this, the image is gonna be weird. Uh, you can see this image is fine and this image is fine, but when you flip them, since they are flipping in the in place, the image is gonna be weird like that. Oh, I see why he's doing uh, two projections of this now. So yeah, we can do this uh, same way I'm doing this actually. So we can have a time shift for the start, let's say this is a start frame. And uh, we might be, just need to be uh, careful that we uh, have an end frame or we pick a frame that it's uh, way past our effect when the effect is done. So let's say I'm gonna pick 240 uh, 240 which is this is an animation it's pretty fast so it's actually 
calculating that frame is not going to take uh, that much time. Okay, you have to uh, make sure, I mean, you have to consider that this is actually going to basically simulate the whole thing to get you the result. So if you know that your uh, animation ends at a hundred or, or less and, and you're not going to change that, you might be better if you change this to a closer frame, for example. Now we can do we can do exactly the same as this. Uh, let's uh, now project it to the bottom. Do exactly the same because at this frame, the, the, the top frame or the bottom uh, group is going to be basically on top. So we can do exactly the same thing, but make this the uh, the bottom group. So because those faces are now up. And then we will have to uh, do the same. Do we need to? I guess we just need to copy it to to a specific group. Top group primitives. Huh. Why is it complaining about not being? Well, we don't really need to set a group because it's going to copy the UVs that are available, I guess. And then we will copy the again for the uh, other group. Right? Is it? Is it right? Am I? So the top group seems fine now, but we're destroying the previous one for some reason. Let's see. Match by attribute. Uh, maybe because we we might need to have a destination group actually. So this is on the vertices which is fine and then we're trying to put this to the vertices and use the uh, top group huh that's weird wait we have a top group right top group yes so that we need to put it to the primitives like that and the source is the same And then do the same here. Primitives, primitives, bottom, bottom. Okay, there we go. So since we weren't assigning groups, it was overriding the rest of the UV since there were just UVs on one and the other ones were being overridden. So now we have UVs for the top and the bottom. And you can see the bottom is it's uh, screwed up or, or just uh, mixed up. But uh, they are fine when they turn over. So yeah, they can do that really quickly. Uh, yeah, you can see now this works. There we go. We have a revealing of an image there. Cool, right on. That works. All right. I mean, by this time the effect is basically done. You can just do whatever you want with this. Uh, just uh, make it uh, do anything, put any image you want, uh, do make it faster, make it slower, make another shape that uh, that makes this thing uh, flip, uh, sphere, something from the side, whatever. It's basically it's basically done. I mean, it's not basically done. It's done. All right, so let's see what else he's doing on the tutorial, but I think at this point we're basically done. He's doing the, the U project. Yeah, he's doing it basically the same thing. He's based saving two images. I, I wouldn't do that to keep the effect procedural if I want the effect to uh, 
last a little bit longer. I can just change this end frame and that will be fine. I don't have to write it to this because uh, yeah, it's not really necessary. I think for this effect that is really simple, it wouldn't be necessary, but uh, so he's putting both in a in a vertex map, which vertex up, which I don't think it, it exists anymore. So now how do we? Okay, yeah, he's using a vertex map, a vertex uh, vertex up. Then assign a material. I mean, yeah, you can assign a material, just assign, well, this is, this is actually a material, but it's just encapsulated in this sub, so you can see inside, if you go inside, there's a material sub, and there's a magnet, and there's a material there, uh, so, you can do exactly the same thing, if you want to just create a material here, and assign it, it's gonna be fine, it's the same exact thing, this is just a shortcut, just so I do it this quickly. Uh, you might need to do, I mean, if you're gonna use Redshift or Octane or Renderman or, or Arnold, whatever, uh, you can just use uh, the the, uh, the materials up and then just uh, assign it to the specific group that you're gonna do, like let's say the top group, and create uh, the material you want, let's say, let's say we're gonna use uh, Octane, you can just do this glossy material, uh, assign the texture there, etc. Uh, but yeah, I am not gonna do that, but you can and you just you would just sign it here to that group or the other group and that that'll be that'll be your uh, render. Uh, let's see uh, what else he's doing here. I think at, at, at this point the effect is basically done as I said you can see he's using two materials opposite same way. I would just use one material sub actually. Uh, this is something that people do a lot, uh, but ma the material sub uh, has multiple materials. You can just, you don't need to do two like this. Anytime I see people doing two, it's just like, why? Don't need to do that. Or doing this material sub all over the place in, in your network. Uh, you can just set up groups and then connect this guy. You can have any amount of materials here uh, on different tabs and in this case you could just have two and then assign one to bottom group and the other one to the top group and yeah there one node to control them uh, it's it's how i do it it's how it seems logical to me uh if i have several places places to assign that i just assign groups up, up the chain for the pieces that i want and then i just assign groups to the materials here in one node so i Whenever I'm tweaking materials, I just go to one single node, not hunting all over my uh, network for materials, you know. I mean, that's, again, that's how I do it. You can do it in a different way and it will be fine if that works for you. All right, so he's just doing a render now and uh, as you can see, Houdini didn't show, seems like Houdini didn't show materials in the viewport <laughs> before. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see what else it's gonna do. Just adding a floor, moving it up, and then adding a floor. And uh, he added uh, some images there. talking about the UV scale because I guess one of his images was looking uh, stretched or something but yeah this is uh, it's it's done it's done cool so we did it we uh, used this knowledge actually the knowledge of this tutorial was great uh, it was just a matter of, of optimizing or, or adapting, not optimizing, adapting some old nodes to the new way of using Houdini and it was actually great. I think this was, this was actually really nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of tutorials out there uh, in Houdini land. So if you see uh, tutorials that are old, but you do the, the thing you wanna do, 
just give them a try. It might be the solution for you. Uh, Cause not everything has to be the new and modern thing. Could be. Oh, this is an has an alpha. I don't want one with an alpha. Just want something that is solid. I had one that has black here somewhere. Uh, this is pretty small. Just trying to illustrate what's happening there. Uh, let's see if I find that logo with. This is black. I don't see anything. Well, I can just change the background color again with that little uh, internal tools thingy. Toggle the background to this. So this is. Uh, it's not correct the aspect ratio because this image is not squared. So what he was doing is just going to this uh, UVs and tweaking it. In this case, just change the scale, but uh, it just repeats sometimes. So you have to be careful about that. This can be set on the shader so it doesn't repeat, but uh, yeah, you can do it like this. Just make it fit there better. But yeah, that's the nature of UVs. They repeat and they you will need to set up the shader so it doesn't repeat just to so it just does one uh texture there. Alright, I mean this is this is done. This is completely done. You can do any geometry now. Uh we could uh any size of geometry we could just tweak the original size of this I guess uh, uh, uh. let's see let's make this 15 let's calculate and everything so you can see if I modify that uh, I will have to be make sure I have enough rows to fill that uh, basically this guy here so that would be I mean you can just calculate that if, if, if how many how much columns you need to fill that in a way see it basically I'm getting kind of like double the double this number so I could just say I just copy this and relative reference and multiply this by two and do the same maybe for the rows uh, copy parameter uh, relative reference times two now if I change these values, I can just, I'm gonna get a really close representation of what I'm, what I have there if I will need to make this bigger or make it longer. You can see the boxes are just duplicating all the time there. Uh, so yeah, you can see, as you can see the, uh, this part takes a little bit because it's going to calculate and all the way back to here up to there so maybe I can just make this to go into a hundred so it's not that bad and uh, we can still modify this let's say 14 you can see that was, sorry that was a, a bit faster just takes it uh, and goes faster uh, and yeah the effect is basically done we can do whatever as we as I said okay let's just uh, switch this to something else Right now we are using a torus shape, but we can do anything really that we can just uh, group stuff with. That we can do a box. We can do a box here and just maybe just see the box and calculate this. Let I want to do this. Make this a template. I want to make this box come from the side. And this box needs to be as big uh, as the uh, as the grid because I'm gonna group those uh, things. So so we could actually maybe connect this grid to there, and and we get uh, we make sure that that is the same size actually, or we can just reference this size here uh, to the uh, to these parameters, which be, it's it will be a way to do it. Uh, you can see now this is gonna be uh, sorry this is the no that's fine uh, this is the uh, 
the C axis basically so we can just copy this to the C axis here and then we can add a little bit of padding maybe just three so we can have more padding there so it's not really exact and then we could just animate this uh, as, as we need to uh, the position here not this but we could just animate just the x-axis don't need to animate all that stuff go to 96 and then just animate this there make sure we're covering the whole thing make another keyframe or we'll just put this to zero since it's the uh, it's going to the center of the world basically just put zero and then just do that again keyframe just that and now you can see that is it's doing that uh, it's a little bit slow, so let me just move this keyframe over here. Two seconds to do that. Uh, so there we go. Now this should be working. Uh, same thing, but now with another uh, way to do it. Sorry, I forgot to change the uh, switch here to there. So now you can see it's doing now from the other side, and I don't know why this. <laughs> Oh, I know why, sorry. It doesn't need to cover the whole thing. Sorry, that was my mistake. It actually has to be just the line. So let's delete this. So this actually needs to be. It needs to be uh, just the line that, that groups because uh, if not the, the, gr the group that uh, makes the objects into the uh, thingy just stays there wait this box didn't work why oh crap this is the wrong axis delete this uh, this is the axis that I want there we are so like that I just want something that goes through this actually so let's make this go through all the way uh, make it over move over here and Let's just do that. And actually, I don't, I really don't recommend doing these things to the actual object. I would just do this into a transform node to do the animation because I, I never recommend you, you do that in a, in a node because uh, that could be just, uh, I mean, you can just leave your node uh, as it is for, for whatever you need and then just uh, animate the the actual properties in a separate node which could be basically thought of as your animation layer and then you can just disable this or add different variations of it of that node etc uh, or add on top of that anything you like really so now we can see how this works see now it's doing that it's just doing doing the little flip in here from one side to the other a little weird there but uh, but it's working so you can also uh, one thing that I wanted to do over here inside a group so we're doing we're doing that mm, I was seeing if I was trying to see if we could uh, make this a little bit softer but seems like we really don't But yeah, that is, you can now do whatever you want here inside of this, actually. If I want to make these guys go higher, because that is actually a little bit fast. You can still make it jump. But it looks a little bit weird because it's just linear, so we can maybe just make this guy, uh, Make this guy go from one side to the other in a one corner to the other basically so it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit more fun I guess uh, let's make this kill smaller like that and let's just uh, translate there and then go here and that is what did I do don't rotate on the x-axis over here and then that and then save that is current oh I made 
uh, boo boo here. <laughs> Let's delete that keyframe. And whoa, sorry, I did not want it to delete everything. I just wanted to delete that keyframe. Just that one. Delete keys, and now it's going to decide. Let's see if how that looks. I mean, this at this point you can just design this however you want. Uh, let's see how it works. Oh, that's odd. I guess I guess I did add a keyframe at the beginning. Or this is rotated weirdly. It's not on the. It's not on the ground actually. That the translate is wrong. So let's delete this so it's on on the so now this should work look at that there we go you can see now it works and yeah you can just do anything you like here do it in any direction so there you go that is done all right uh are there any questions guys for now because i think i'm gonna finish this for today like that uh we spent the, like three hours last week and i don't want to spend three hours today i just want to uh, just i just wanted to finish this really and oh that looks nice oh that looks cool i like that this should be something on the website look at that that looks nice I like it. Actually, let's see. Uh, let me try this. Now I want to try something. This is the great thing about stuff like this. It just gives you ideas. Like, so this looks fine, and then looks fine. Huh. Okay. I was trying to see if I could reveal that thing, but I guess I could if I just do this to both groups and yes, this is what I wanted to see. Like just like it's all like this, shoop, 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 shoop. just revealing that, uh, that image there. You can see it from the top and see it's gonna be like that and then you just reveal it like from down nice okay so is it con is it possible to use an image to control this transition I mean it yeah I guess it could uh, this is it's made from for our, uh, in this case it's made for uh, geometry but I guess you could I mean you have to adapt it to do this because it's using the because um, this is copying by it's using the group create for this so you would have to adapt this area right here uh -huh. and uh, but of course it is possible. Uh, let's, let's, how do I uh, wipe, linear wipe, I don't know. How do I get an image to do this? Uh, I don't have a sequence of images that I have available for this. But yeah, I mean, the thing is, this thing is basically using the color for the jump group here so we could just do whatever we want for the color uh, uh, i'm trying to think where can i get an image to do this so let's just let's just produce our own basically just go to the image tab here and uh, let's uh, do the composite view let's add uh, a ramp I guess and let's make this image squared for now so we don't have to be dealing with anything weird uh, it doesn't matter the UVs will make it square anyway 
really is that doesn't really matter so let's just animate this ramp this will be any image you want really because uh where's my points uh let's say let's just make this one and we will we actually let's just i know what i'm gonna do i'll just just make a color so this effect works with a uh, black and white basically so let's make this white and let's make another color so I'm just making a sample here uh, and let's just composite this uh, these things are the wrong direction let's make this Let's make this image smaller. So just making this guy smaller, I'm gonna animate it uh, really quickly to there. I'm gonna maybe you know what I'm gonna just do this make it go over there do that and then do some rotation keyframes yeah so we have something different I guess so it's gonna do this for maybe some of the maybe some of the uh, maybe some parts would not get activated if we do this so I just made it scale it bigger this is just what's gonna happen. I mean, this could be whatever image, uh, okay? So it just could be whatever. Uh, we can make this into a name, an image sequence just by doing a wrap here. File output, and uh, let me save this. Uh, let's do this. It's going from one to forty. I'm just gonna do to fifty, so I don't. So you have just two frames of padding there. Uh, so it seems like I don't have a render folder. Let's create a render folder. Render. Let's create a folder called uh, image slice. I don't know. Something like that. And then just gonna name this dollar f4. Dot. Uh, I'm gonna make this what JPG whatever. So you would have to make your image uh, an image sequence for this to work in a way. Not in a way, you have to do this. So let's just render this. So Dean is not gonna load any video, so you have to make it an image sequence. So now we have that image sequence. Let's go back to object mode here. And we can adapt this. I'm, I'm not gonna mess that mess with this one. I'm gonna just make another one. So I don't, I leave the, that. I leave that, actually this is an actual tool, so I don't have, need to do that really so um, just if we think about this we are uh, using in the pop net we're using the actual group here to get points from a group so we need to uh, we need to have a group of, of something right so I'm going to load a uh, load the image sequence into into a grid let's just we can just grab this same grid uh, here that we have and then just say but we're gonna need just just to grab the same size but we're gonna need a lot more a lot more uh, rows and columns so let's just say a map map from image attribute from map sorry and then we can just load that image that we just created, uh, make it as an image sequence, and then you can see here, there it is. It's on it's on a plane, but it, it looks a little bit weird, so we can add more points to this. Uh, 
it looks low res because there's not enough points. So it's at, right now it's adding that to the points, but now we want we want to have a group here. In this case, we need to replace this inside group uh, with whatever we have here so the rest of the chain works, uh, right? So let me just make this uh, like an alternative way here. And then of course we need this inside group because it's being used starting from here it's being used so we need to find a way to group those points so we can just say with the uh, the group expression or any other thing would actually just I think this even this one works uh, we need points and we need to make this call inside group just calling it here because if I use the name it's gonna give it a, a, a one at the end so I don't want to break the chain down here because it's referring exactly to this. So you can say, uh, let's say if, if color red, uh, color red is greater, is greater than zero. See if that gives us some points. Okay, it seems like this one doesn't. I'm gonna use the expression, the group expression then. Uh, oh, sorry, I, this is wrong, CDR. This should work, yeah, this works, yeah. He knew that worked. So that works, now we have the points there. We just need to connect this here and switch this to one. And this this just should work, really. Uh, all this should be working now. Let's see if it's actually working. Maybe not, maybe we just destroy everything. But yeah, it works. <laughs> some part of it just flew away for some reason. Look at that. Like, wonk? Why? I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Uh, it's something uh, related to how the groups are being uh, defined, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Uh, yeah, you just have to be see why this thing is, but you can see this is working. Oh, at the end, it's just oh, there's it's because I can. I think there's uh, this little edge there at the very end Let's just tweak this a little bit so we don't get that edge zero one zero what is it why do we have that little edge there that's weird let me fix it from the source so we go to image here composite view oh yeah there it is you can see that you can see that little edge there I didn't move this guy enough there so let's move it so there's no black at the end there I mean no no white because it just it's breaking our animation so let's just do this again but yeah this could be any kind of image and you can just do this um, I mean, they might. There might be other kind of small issues or stuff. Uh, oh no, we just crashed. Great, and I didn't save. Who did it? Just crashed. That's awesome, Houdini. Seems like everything else is working, but Houdini decided to just explode can't even continue crashing come on take me out of this misery oh come on anyway are you guys still uh, is the stream fine I'm gonna have to See how I can kill these things. I don't know what is happening. Didn't crash, but it didn't crash completely. Basically, it's stuck there. It's stuck crashing. Come on, Houdini. Can you for just finish crashing, please? 
Let me see if I can do anything. Huh. I don't know. Don't worry, Elias. Uh, yeah, take a look at uh, this thing again and then just see what uh, what's happening there. Uh, it's uh, it's really simple stuff. It's not that complex. Okay, I have no... Oh, there we go. So now at least something... It's... There we go. Thank you for crashing, Houdini. As you should. All right. Let me just see if I could just show you that. Uh, finish thing that sh it should work I guess I think that in that animation I made some particles are not touched or some groups are not touched and, and the way the logic is made for the uh, for the groups is just uh, failing in that case I think but uh, yeah you would just have to make the uh, make the logic be uh, a little bit more intelligent there I guess and for that particular case if if, if something is not being touched maybe it's something that I uh, didn't do correctly but uh, somebody mentioned that uh, that I was trying to remake or or just that they thought that that was basically like what mobs does and uh, if you guys are interested we could just take a look at that and see how we can recreate this in in mobs which is uh, I lost the whole thing here didn't save uh, let me just recreate that really quickly I did a grid actually this grid grid with a attribute for map load that image since seems that uh, I mean since I'm doing this again it's uh, like a repetition so you guys can see it a little bit uh, better I guess uh, this let's just delete this put it channels there it is so now at the at the very end it's just doing that that's I think that's why it's failing because at the end just ends the frame and then just goes black so let's see image settings let's see if if there is an it seems like there's no way to do this here but uh, we can just we can just fake it uh, so it doesn't do that maybe that's why it was triggering that thing uh, at the end CDR greater than zero and make these two points so this should be working that and then inside a group let me save now uh, let's make a switch here put it here uh, connect this guy make this to number two and I think yeah actually you can see these the points over here are never actually touched and then when it goes to this it, they just jump because they are part of the group here uh, so what we can do actually here is just let's just trick this so we can really make anything here for the image uh, after it's done so we can just say uh, add some color to this after let's add black here so this doesn't happen after another switch here so after frame 50 so let's keyframe this 51 we're just gonna keep it black so it's not doesn't do that weird jump so yeah that was what's hap uh, what was happening basically the, the top points were not being touched and then when it switched just uh, everything else was just jumped you can see it works it works there Actually, I think I have the same image in those two. So let's just switch the image for something else. Uh, let's see what's on my picture folder, just so we have something different that is not just... Oh, this, this is fun. So there we go. You can see half of my, my dog there. But you can see this 
this area wasn't was never touched there so that is just left there so but yeah you can just use any image and just have it have it work the same way it's just it's uh yeah it works uh let's just reduce this to let's say zero for now you can just reveal my little pug there look at that that's a uh, most beautiful thing you've seen <laughs> and then you can make this into a tool that you can just make somebody plug an image here and expose this parameter use this to switch between geometry or image and uh, and uh, it works see that just uses that and you can use the torus shape here as well you can just reveal the cutest thing ever Look at that. Bruno, where is my cap? <laughs> oh my god. Uh yeah. Any other questions? Uh if not, I'm just gonna fin end, end for today. Look at that. You can keep looking at Bruno as much as uh just make this 120. 120 and then make this Zigzag. You can play it backwards. You can play it forwards. You can do whatever you want at this point. As you can see, uh, um, Peter took it to an extreme, I guess, there in, in the intro of this. It just did a lot of different things. Multiply the... Uh, the height by a ramp and and did a lot of crazy stuff there but yeah you could just do this uh you can just control the height in any way you need there all right so thank you guys for joining me today hope you learned a little bit hope you are excited to see uh there's a lot of material out there in houdini that you can just adapt to to whatever version you are that is actually a, a skill that i think it's very valuable because there's always going to be documentation or tutorials that are out of date. Uh, and then if you are available to able, sorry, if you're able to, to do this kind of a thing, just take something and, and make it useful for you with whatever, in whatever version of Houdini you're working on, that is just going to be, uh, really, really valuable in an artist like, uh, because, yeah, I mean, we are problem solvers. That's what we are. And if we don't adapt, uh, we're going to be doomed, really. We need to adapt to whatever situation. That's I, that's the, the best thing I can uh, advise uh, or the best advice I can give you. Just make yourself really, really a big problem solver and uh, adapt to whatever. Uh, don't ever say like, oh, Houdini doesn't do that or whatever I don't, doesn't do that. Houdini can do basically whatever. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. All right, so with that, I'm gonna end it for today. Hopefully you guys learned something today. I'm I'm positive that I learned something today. I, I wanted to do this effect forever, so now it's done. And uh, I think next week, next week we can uh, do it in mobs, actually. Uh, I haven't used mobs for a while. I did, I did actually a, a mobs tutorial, right? I I uh, seem to remember that I did that YouTube seem to remember that I did something with mobs maybe it did this effect I think I've, I've done a few things with mobs but I did a tutorial with this if I think I did this exact effect yeah actually there it is <laughs> so if you want to see how to do it in mobs actually it's, it's already there uh, already did it uh, no need to redo it. So I'm 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 totally sure I, this was uh, inspired by that tutorial uh, that Peter did actually. But because yeah, you can see this looks looks super good. Uh, Mops is really 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 nice. Uh, But it, it does a lot of things, but I just I just did something simple, but it does 
crazy amazing things uh, you should check it out actually it's at motionoperators.com and it there it does a lot of things uh, uh, seems like there's no like showcase here maybe here but yeah you can do they have this is as a basic uh, example here uh, it does a lot of things here's the showcase I guess maybe maybe I should get more into this actually Uh, yeah okay well that's it i'll see you guys uh next week all right keep learning keep uh keep houdini running and uh also do other things not just houdini just go outside take a walk i don't know learn electronics do play guitar something that you like because houdini is not everything in life i mean it's a big part of my life but it's not everything right all right, guys, I will see you uh, next week, okay? Bye. 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 All right, so let's finish this.